Hi everyone and welcome to this week's webinar on product listings. So this is one of the obligations under MOCRA and I will be taking you through a checklist to help you prepare to complete your product listings. I'm Kamal, I'm the head of regulatory here at Worldover. I have nearly eight years experience in the regulatory industry across FMCG, luxury and e-commerce beauty brands. So why is it a good idea to actually spend some time on preparing the product listings before heading straight into the portal and just completing them one by one based on the information that you already know? It definitely ensures that your information is accurate and it also helps with the efficiency of your product's information. So if you actually spend a little bit of time up front organising your information following this checklist that I will take you through, in the long run, it will be more efficient to stay on top of the data, especially if you have a really vast product portfolio. It also helps to build some internal processes. If you are ever subject to an FDA inspection, internal processes and how you manage product information and product data is one of the key points of an FDA inspection. The more robust processes and accurate processes that you have in place will only work in your favour should you ever be subject to an inspection. And of course, it organises your product portfolio. It's a really good check over exactly what you have in your product portfolio, what is being sold in the US, and it might even inspire a product portfolio review, but it's really good to have all of the information in one place. So there's a couple of checklists that I will be running through. The first one is the product portfolio checklist. So this is essentially a very top level summary of the products that you will be notifying um, on FDA Cosmetics Direct. And here I would start with listing out the full product names. This must be for the cosmetic products sold in the US only. So not any of the other markets and not any of the other classifications. So if you have SPFs, for example, in the US, they are not cosmetic. So you would not need to list these on FDA Cosmetics Direct. I would then include alongside each product name, all of its manufacturing and processing facilities. We went in detail on what a facility is as defined in MOCRA a few weeks ago. So I would definitely recommend going back to that webinar and just having a refresher to make sure you're clear on who the manufacturer is and if you actually have any process processing facilities and whether you need to include these. The key thing to remember here is any facility that is touching the actual formulation, the bulk of the product is very likely to be a facility under MOCRA and therefore also require FDA Cosmetics Direct listing but as a facility. For each facility that you have identified, so your manufacturing facility and perhaps any processing facilities, you will need to obtain the FEI number. This is the FDA establishment identifier, and it is a unique code that each manufacturing and processing facility will have. So this is where you need to start talking to your manufacturers and your processing facilities and asking for this number. Without this number, you're not able to start a product listing within FDA Cosmetics Direct. I would also confirm the US responsible person for each product. So it might be that you have different US responsible persons for a different batch of products, depending on where they're manufactured, for example. And you will need to include their details on this. So addresses, telephone number, contact information. And the reason you need the contact information is so that people can report any adverse events. So to summarise, you would want a top level tracker, which includes the full list of products, all of its manufacturing and processing facilities, their FEIs, and the US responsible person for each of the products. One thing I would like to add actually at this stage is when identifying your US responsible person, 
we did a webinar on this as well a few weeks ago. So if you do feel like you need a refresher on trying to identify who that US responsible person is, please go back and watch that. Um, it's very highly likely that you already have a US responsible person on your packaging and it will be one of those names and addresses that you already have on there. The key thing to remember with US responsible person is it is either the manufacturer, distributor or packer that is present on the product label. So just to help identify who that responsible person is. But as I said, if you would like a bit more information and some worked examples, please go back and watch the webinar from a few weeks ago, which focuses on US responsible person. The next checklist that I would like to take you through is more detail on the actual products themselves. So the first one's very top level. This one is the detail. So this is actually probably the tracker that you would be using when you are completing your listing within FDA Cosmetics Direct. The reason I would recommend this is so that you are not trying to find information through various files, various software platforms that you may be using. It's really easy to just have all of this information on an Excel spreadsheet and have it on one screen whilst you're comp completing your listing on another screen. So on this tab of your tracker, I would include obviously the product name. I would identify the category of the cosmetic product. So the categories of cosmetic product are have been set, sorry, by the FDA. And these are within the FDA Cosmetics Direct platform. However, last week I did go through a, a work example of a product listing. And there is a slide in there which includes the categories. So you can go back and have a look at that and identify your category from there. You also need to gather the ingredients list and identify whether any fragrance, flavor or colorants have been used. For the ingredients list, you only need to include the actual substances in the formulation as per the inky list. You don't need to have the percentage breakdown of these substances if you do not need to put that information into the product listing. You then need the name, FEI and contact details of each manufacturer and processing facility. So this information you could um, obtain from the product portfolio checklist and you'll be able to pull that across fairly easily, but it's just so that you have that full view of what the product is, what the category is, what the ingredients are, who is making it and who is processing it. If you do have any previously assigned product listing numbers, it might be quite unlikely at this stage, then you are able to also add those into the listing. And if you would prefer to include things like product images or the product website, you can also include that in the listing. But those uh, two items, so the images and the website, they are optional. So you don't need to include them, but you can if you wish to do so for whatever reason. Now, following today's webinar, um, we will be publishing, obviously, the webinar um, on, at the usual place. But alongside that, there will be a tracker which you are able to download and use and populate with your products. The tracker has two tabs. So one which focuses on the product portfolio, so that very top level information, and another which has the more in-depth information on each product, so the product listing checklist. This is the one that you are going to be using when you are completing your um, facility, sorry, product listing. And you will also then be able to add to it the FDA submission type, um, what the status of it is, and the cosmetic listing number as well. So everything lives in that one tracker on that one tab and you're able to refer to it. It's a great file to use because should you be subject to any FDA submissions, you know exactly what you have listed, who is making it and your information, as I said at the start, is super organized, super clear, and you have built some internally robust processes. So that will be following the webinar. And I really hope that you download it, use it. If you have any feedback, then that would be great. Please share that with me. And that brings me to the end of today's webinar. Um, I hope it was super useful and I hope you're able to take 
the key elements from each of the checklists and apply them to organize your information so it is ready for the FDA cosmetic listing. Thank you very much.